We're in the Spotify studios that Spotify has recently uh, made for us, and we're here because today was the grand opening. Thank you so much for choosing to end your week here with us. I'm going to pass it off to Dr. Cruz. Well, I do th thank y'all so much for coming out today to just really it's a really celebration, a celebration of a vision for kids and their talents and what we can do in the future. And that's what today represents. This is a phenomenal school, Keeling Middle School. She didn't introduce herself, but I want to introduce her to uh, Ms. Kanisha Coburn. She is our phenomenal principal. You get a phenomenal school, phenomenal principal of Keeling Middle School. I really want to thank her for her leadership, first year principal at the school, and already out of the box, this is what she's come together to design, to support for the learning here at our school. And I think that's so important. Just I was speaking to Mr. Eiser, who's explaining some of the opportunities here are just amazing because it just, again, speaks to me that the talents that our kids have, but the opportunities we need to provide for them so they can demonstrate those skills and those talents. And, and I think that's just really phenomenal. We do this work, but we don't do it alone. As you all know, in Austin ISD, it is with 84,000 students at 130 campuses. Every single one of our kids needs to know that they're part of a family, that they're smart, that somebody cares about them, and that's what Keeling represents. We know we can do it, but we can't do it alone. We need partners to support us along the way. I do want to thank DPR Construction uh, for their great work. I want to thank Dr. Hasty and MindPop for his great vision and his great work, being a, part, a great partner with us. I want to thank Spotify for the wonderful support and the great job just sort of having all this come together. Really want to thank you for your work as well. And then I also want to thank Dave Downing with AISD Construction. This was all done during spring break time, making sure that it was all ready for our students. So I want to thank all of our folks who have done the good work. I also want to thank the Keeling community, Keeling staff. So if you're a staff member from here at Keeling, if you please either stand or wave. I know Dean's in the back over there, Danielle, everybody. I want to thank you for the great work. It really is wonderful to work in Austin and to see some of the great work for our kids. You're going to, you're going to hear some of their talents in just a little bit. I also want to recognize someone because he really is an individual who really loves this city who just really works night and day. I do not know how he does it. I just was in a meeting with him yesterday. We were talking about something completely different, and now here, are, here we are today talking about this. But he demonstrates the leadership that Austin really, really needs, a vision that we need to work towards every single day. And he really is the individual who can demonstrate that vision and try to get all of us to work together towards realizing that vision. And he is our mayor, Mayor Adler. You know, this job and, and, and this, this moment and this event uh, it just it just does not get any better or more special or more awesome uh, than what's happening right here. You go right now anywhere in the world and say you're from Austin, Texas. It means something to, to people. And, and what gets played back to you is not the economy we have, which is on fire. Uh, it's not the unemployment rate. It's not it's not the, 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 the skyscrapers or the going up and the changing skyline. What, what gets played back to you is the feel of this town. It's that Austin is a creative and innovative and entrepreneurial city. And, and, there, and today in Austin, Texas, there is no spot in this city that is more creative and innovative than, than this spot is right now. You know, I talk about uh, South by Southwest when I, when I do those events, and this house started there, and I, and I talk about how South by is, uh, is, is different than Las Vegas. I mean, I, I, and I've said that a hundred times here over the last uh, festival, and I talk about in Las Vegas, you know, they say what, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Except that what happens in Austin doesn't stay in Austin. Austin is where the first, the first tweet uh, happened. Uh, and now there's tweets happening all over the world. Well, it started, it started here. Uh, but I always talked about South by South that way, that, that South by is where ideas come, this city is where ideas come to become, to become real. Uh, and, then they go out to the, and then they go out to the world. But today is different. Today is where South by stays here. I mean, the concept uh, of, of Spotify to take the, the house, 
uh, and, to, and to plant that house in this city, a temporary structure, but to, but to plant it and to, and to have it start and grow something with, with, with these uh, uh, artists and, and musicians that are going to be taking over is such a, a creative and innovative idea. And then to, to come into this space and, and hear the music and, and to see what's up on the walls and the folks that spent the uh, incredible uh, uh, intense weekend uh, pulling all of this uh, uh, together. It's just exciting. And I was with uh, uh, the mayor of New York uh, uh, last year, the end of last year, Bill de Blasio. And at one point he leaned over to me and he said, you know, it could be that, that, that Austin may be the only city in the country that's cooler than New York. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> he asked me if I heard him say maybe. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think there is any maybe about it. I mean, this is this town. The people in this town is as cool as it gets, and this spot in this town has become a pretty cool spot. Uh, I'm real excited uh, uh, that uh, this studio is here, and, and and you guys, you have some some big shoes uh, to to fill. Uh, you know, we have uh, churches and Vince Staples and uh, uh, Casey Musgrave have played uh, with this equipment and in this spot. Uh, but I, I understand that the, that the Keeling Hornets have their, their own award-winning music uh, uh, team and, and program and are, are up to this moment. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited to have been invited to this. And this is an idea and a concept that we will... That, that's good, and, and we're going to move this to some more of these houses uh, as they come into town, because that's what you do with good innovation. You let it spread. So thanks for making me part of this. I'm Brent Hasty. I'm the executive director of Mind Pop. Six years ago, uh, a group of people from around the city said, what if we realized that dream that the mayor uh, just expressed? What if we could create arts-rich schools within an arts-rich community and really provide pathways from kids' experiences and kids' learning to uh, the world? And we started the Creative Learning Initiative, bringing those forces together. And under the leadership of Dr. Cruz and Mayor Adler, it's expanded even more. Uh, so now over 50%, almost 50% of schools in Austin Independent School District are on their way to being arts-rich. Teachers are using creative teaching strategies across the curriculum. Kids have more access to arts learning, and we're starting to build more pathways. And when Carrie called me a year and a half ago and said, would you like to cook up something? Maybe there's a nonprofit or something that could benefit. Uh, we don't know what it is. We don't know what it might be. But we need some partners to help us dream and dream big. And uh, I said, have we got an idea for you? <laughs> and uh, under her amazing vision, um, we were able to realize this. Not only does it provide more access to kids for arts learning, um, but it really starts to build the pathway to all the incredible careers. Um, <clears throat> and I know that some of these kids are already on Spotify with their music, so it's only just a start. Um, but this idea of creating arts rich school is being realized thanks to the mayor and the superintendent and, and great community partners. Um, there are a couple people I want to thank because this has been a long gr growing process. The Austin Creative Classroom Fund helped provide some seed money early on uh, to start this program for the, for the academy kids. And, the PTA of Keeling was instrumental in making that happen, and Chase Bank contributed money, all in, in the growing of this thing that now could blossom into this. It's an exciting time for Austin uh, and creative learning, and now we just have to continue to grow it. Man, this has been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. We're happy to have Carrie from Spotify back with us today. She flew in for this event. We got used to her being around, so we miss her a little bit, so we're uh, glad she's here. I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you about um, the history of Keeling and why this project. Um, those of you who are native Austinites, you know that we have been in the heart of East Austin for a long time. We originally opened as the first junior high school uh, that was accessible uh, by African-American students. 
Um, and then we closed uh, due to desegregation efforts and reopened back in the 80s um, as a school with a program within that school. Um, so we have two programs here. Um, we have the academy program, which primarily serves students who are zoned to Keeling. Uh, we do also have the magnet program that serves the entire city of Austin. So if you spit every address out of my students on a map, um, which which she did, which I did to get her <laughs> to come here, um, you see that, that we cover the entire city of Austin, and when you reach our campus, you reach every neck of AISD. Um, our challenge this this year uh, to start has been one of campus culture and community and how do you do this idea of two programs in one school and do it well and so we've been looking at where are the spaces where we collaborate already um, and where are the spaces where we coexist really well and how do we move more towards that collaboration and one of the spaces we do that best is fine arts um, there is absolutely an economic component to accessing music um, I have students who've been playing instruments since they were four. Um, and I have students who love music and haven't had an instrument in their hand. And music production is a space where all of my students, regardless of where they live in the city of Austin, um, what their parents are able to provide for them, come in on a level playing field. Most students don't have push system in their house. Um, so they come here and they come in in this place of, yes, we love music and we have that in common and we're interested in this and we can start this together. Um, so it, I love this program for that reason. Um, and then we thought, uh, when Carrie came, we had no idea, I don't know if you knew, I don't know. We had no idea what the project could be, so we thought, let's give her a bunch of ideas and then let's create our dream. And this space was our dream project um, because it, and the kids will talk to you more about what it does for them, uh, but we thought, man, this is a space that everyone can use. Um, orchestra can come in here. Choir can come in here. We have students and teachers who use music in their core classes, and they can come in here. And this can be a hub for the school. Um, and so we're very excited that she was able to partner with us to really help us further our vision of being really two programs, but one campus where everyone is getting what they need. From Spotify's perspective, so Spotify has been coming to South by Southwest for the last couple of years. and. We've always, because we believe fundamentally that everyone should have access to music, we have always worked with the city of Austin. We've always worked with nonprofits within the space. Um, but as our presence has grown, we also recognize that we have a bigger opportunity to um, create deeper relationships and really turn what can be you know, a very fleeting um, time in Austin and to something that has a much more long-lasting um, effect. And I know personally from being here, and I am, don't hiss, from the Mayor de Blasio city, so uh, I know that it is so important. I know uh, what it's like to be an outsider coming into Austin for the festival, and you see, and it's almost remarkable how much the city gives of itself uh, to those of us who are here during that short period of time. And so for us to have the opportunity to actually turn what we were doing at the festival into something like this that continues our vision of providing access to all students and using music as a way to really bring people together. To us, we didn't really know what the project would be either. And when we came to, um, to Mind Pop, we said, here's what we think we could have, what, what do we do with it? And I think that is one of the most important things is us coming in with a very open perspective so that it works for your school and it fits the vision that you have. And along with our amazing partners like DPR Construction and Rebuilding Together and Acoustic Spaces, we all just sort of felt like we could do this. And it's amazing to see it um, come to fruition. So we're very, very proud to be here. And I'm very proud that we can help tell the stories of Ms. Coburn and of, the, of Keeling Middle School and of the students um, to the world because you guys deserve it. It's an amazing program. I'm a guitarist, so I uh, play guitar over whatever drums and piano I come up with on the computer. I've been using Ableton since sixth grade um, when I had my first year of music production. I like it because it's so easy to just make whatever you want from scratch. This was one large classroom, and during spring break, we built this wall and made three recording rooms. Spotify, 
donated all of the <coughs> equipment on the desks, um, the recording equipment, the design of the acoustical yeah. space. That mural was in the Spotify house. Those pictures detail some of the activities that happened during South by Southwest, the construction. Um, this long table was in the Spotify house. Um, these computers are what we use in our classroom. They run Ableton Live. It's the real deal software that all the pros are using nowadays. Skrillex, Diplo, Justin Bieber, all using this software. <laughs> The um, push controller is what we use, and you're seeing the birth of a new instrument on par with the violin or piano. It can play um, melodies, chords, beats. It can arrange our songs, do live performance, and with the knobs we can modify and sound sculpt and do lots of different things. I'm gonna go uh, rogue here and <laughs> and give you a visual tour of what you don't see in this classroom. When I was 11, I started taking drum lessons. I went to all the solo and ensemble competitions and won ribbons. I was in the All-State Orchestra and the All-State Band. I went to college as a music major. I played everything my teacher told me. I played everything my band director told me to play and my conductor told me to play. Oftentimes I was playing notes that some guy 200 years ago was telling me exactly what to play. My senior year in college, I got to tour the country to play a multiple percussion piece. Uh, I went up to Canada and I came down to UT Austin. Part of that piece was play the kalimba and play a solo on the kalimba, improvise it. So I went outside Bass Concert Hall and sat underneath the tree and figured out what am I going to play on this thing? And it was awesome. For the first time I was ever, I was invited to play my own music. And that's what we do in this class. Music production means we compose our own music. We make our own music. Some of my favorite lessons <coughs> are, who was the very first music producer ever? <laughs> Thomas Edison, he invented the phonograph. So that's the first time music is being recorded. But the lesson I teach is not about the light bulb. The lesson I teach is about perspiration. Because when we're making music, we have to try things. We have to play the notes this way. We have to start on a different note. We have to play it with a different phrasing, change the dynamics. And we have to do it over and over again. And it sounds awful, and it's not right, and it's no good. But if we keep doing it, then eventually our heads start to nod, and we make something that's really, really nice. So I teach that to the kids um, when we're starting to make bass lines and riffs and chords. Just keep plugging away at it. You're going to find something. Another of my favorite lessons is about Lindsey Sterling. Lindsay Sterling is a violin player dancer, and we watch her on America's Got Talent, and she gets three red buzzers uh, in front of the whole audience, in front of national TV, and the people are telling her, the problem with you is, and you're not good enough because, and she, she listens to them and she says, thank you. And I teach that lesson when the kids start to share their music with each other. Because we need to listen to people's criticism, and maybe there's a good idea in it. But if you've made something that you like, then stick with it and be secure in what you've been making. Lindsey Sterling is the highest paid person on YouTube in the whole world right now. <laughs> the last lesson I teach is this one. Play. If you imagine a kid in a sandbox, what's he doing? He's smushing his figures and he's putting sand, he's doing all kinds of things. And what I want us to do is what Clapton and Hendrix and Prince and Bowie did. They were all self-taught. That doesn't mean they didn't listen to people and learn things, but that means they spent an incredible amount of time on their own playing trying to figure out what questions do I need to ask? What resources do I need? But I'm gonna figure this out and I'm gonna spend the time exploring and experimenting. And that's what we do in this class. 
we spend a whole lot of time with open-ended projects like make a ringtone. Well, a ringtone could sound like anything. So you've got a couple of days here to put some sounds together and try different things. Be silly, be weird, be scary, um, play with it. I took all those lessons and I always played what my teacher uh, was telling me to do, but at home, I was in my bedroom jamming to Led Zeppelin <laughs> and Phil Collins on the drum set. At the end of this project, a bunch of us that had worked on it went out to dinner and we were kind of laughing with each other and saying, yeah, we're all the kind of people who go rogue. We're all creators and builders and makers. And at a certain point in this project, each of us had to play the notes in a different way, make a different transition, decide to um, play with a different instrument. We had to do all these things that are skills and so I don't know what my kids are going to be when they grow up, but I know that they're going to have these skills um, because we are inviting them to make their own music. We have some students here um, who are in a variety of organizations on campus um, that will be benefiting from this space. We thought it might be fun for you all to hear from them about who they are and what they do and then what this space is going to do for them as QA students. Um, hi. I'm Richa. Um, this is really nerve-wracking. Um, so I play the violin in orchestra, and I um, and I just love it. Okay, so I um, love orchestra. I love music in general. I love singing. I love anything that has to do with music. Music is kind of my life. And so I feel like um, I'm going to benefit from this studio because it'll help me create better music. I think it'll, like, I don't like recording myself with a phone because it just, it's just meh. It's just, it's boring because, like, it doesn't create, like, clear sound. It doesn't create, it doesn't show off, like, my, like, what I really, what, <laughs> it's really hard to talk. And so, it, um, it doesn't like show off what I really, what I really have, what potential I really have, and I feel like the studio is is going to, um, whenever I play the violin in the studio, it's going to show off what um, what I am really doing, what I'm capable of, um, what my like if I sing if I somehow like am able to sing in the studio, like it's going to um, help me just. Um, show off whatever whatever like I think I can do and I, I think it's really going to help me improve in my music skills and yeah. I'm Christian and I'm in music production too. Um, I chose this um, elective because it, it sounded really cool mixing computer software to make music because you can do a lot of things. Um, you can like change music on the spot while you're recording and stuff. And also, I like the studios because um, you don't just hear it from the headphones. You can actually hear it clear from the the, the speakers, and you can hear how the music's actually gonna turn out because um, it it's completely different when you hear it from a headphone than a speaker because um, the sounds turn out differently. Also, I I chose to stay in this elective because. I, um, I love to make music here and it was really fun in the <coughs> last year so I wanted to make more music and try new things and try to keep on making better music and improving so that's why I chose to stay and yeah. Uh, I'm Bray John, I'm in music production too and I chose to be in music production because I know when I get older I want to be a music producer. I think music like kind of helps me calm down and all that. And like you said, it's kind of like different in the studio. And I was in band. I played steel drums for like five years. Uh, I know that uh, I kind I played the drums with church. I played. Uh, I played kind of. I played. Yeah, I sung in the church choir, and uh, I work with the sound at church. So I work with the like volume and mixing music and all that. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing here too. So behind that wall, there's a mixing board also. So 
Mr. Eisler has decided that in addition to producers, he's going to make DJs uh, in this program. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aubrey and I'm in choir and I think choir can benefit from the studios because it can be used as a learning tactic. Like when we have concerts, we don't really record our stuff so we just like practice over and over again. But we can come into the studio and like record our music and see what we need to like fix for the future. And also it'll just be fun, like after we've finished it and we're proud of our work, we can show it off in the studio. So that'll be pretty cool. My name is Jackson, and I've been playing the cello for seven or eight years now. And uh, I came into the studio when uh, my group and I were assigned an English project uh, based off the novel of Mice and Men. And so for that project, my partners and I decided to write a duet um, and uh, combine poetry with the duet uh, to show like the themes and motifs of, of, of Mice and Men. And so once we were done, our our teacher asked us if we wanted to record. And I think one of the cool things about the studio is that it, it can turn something from just a simple English project into something that you can <coughs> record and listen to over and over again and something other people can listen to. Okay, so hi, my name's Yeshua, as many of you have seen in the video. <laughs> so I've been in music production for all of my middle school life, and this class, um, okay, I'm going to be honest. At first, when I joined this class, I didn't think I would like it to this extent. But being able to sit here and work on something that isn't just normal school work or some more papers and something I enjoy, has helped me get through my school life and just let me work on the stuff I like to do. So. And let's see. Okay, so when I was first told about having, well, getting to work with Spotify to create something that would benefit all of us, I was, I was excited. And then I was one of the first people to know as Yeshua helped put together our pitch to Perry, so he's known and kept it a secret since November, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Good. So, being able to do that and see it come to the school and actually happen was, was great. Our choir is here, and Ms. Parks, our fantastic choir director, uh, we'll talk to you about this particular group because they're a bit unique. And then you'll get to hear the choir version, and then you'll get to hear what happens to a choir piece when they hand it over to a student in the music production program. All right, so this is a cappella. Um, a student came to me a couple of years ago, and she was like, Ms. Parks, can we please do this? Just be our sponsor. Like, it'll be student-led and everything. And it really has uh, continued to, to be very student-led. Uh, Sam Buford is our student director this year. Wave, Sam. And then uh, all the songs are student-arranged. So what you're about to hear is Stressed Out by 21 Pilots, arranged by Healing Acapella. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Ever heard. I wish I had a better voice to sing some better words. I wish I found some chords in an order that is new. I wish I didn't have to rhyme every time I sang. I was told when I get older all my fears would shrink, but now I'm insecure and I care what people think. My Same nose, same clothes, home grown, a stone, so clean, used to 
Rome. Oh. But it would remind us of when nothing really mattered. Out of student loves and trio songs, we'd all take the left. My, my, my name's Glory production and I incorporate a lot of what I learned into the songs that I make. I always start with 
a drum beat and a piano chord progression. Um, on my most recent song that I made, I put the drums, piano, and bass all laid down first, and then I recorded guitar over that to finish it. definitely like inspired me to take it to the next level. Um, I already like liked making music, but um, this has shown me that I'm gonna have opportunities and um, that, and I want to pursue them. you all are as excited about this space as we are um, having heard what our students produce in fine arts programs and then what our students can do um, with the music that our students make I would like to thank Carrie um, for choosing to leave a mark on Austin beyond South by Southwest um, I, I, I wish every uh, large corporation um, would be this giving to schools um, I would also like to thank uh, Mind Pop for kind of taking on this task of making sure that our students are still uh, engaged with music and fine arts and, and learning creatively and putting that back in classrooms. Um, I would like to thank Rebuilding Together for putting together a crew of laborers um, <laughs> to, to get this work done. Um, who am I missing? Acoustic Spaces. They're not here today. Um, 
We had great construction crews and great minds, but no one knew what this should look like, What's what the windows should be, and, and what kind of soundproofing you need. Um, and Acoustic Spaces came in um, to do that work and, and say, here's what you need to make this space work for your kids. And then finally, um, DPR construction. Um, yes. DPR is a giant company. Um, they are, I think, building some shop in the domain right now. Um, they added the children's wing to Seton Northwest, I believe. Um, and so throughout the project, uh, them coming in and saying, hey, this is easy. We're like, well, we thought this was hard. This is easy. Um, we'll do all the labor. Um, them spending their spring break with us giving up vacation time with their families. Um, all of these folks who are really gifted in whichever, your, whichever field they work in came together to do this because they believe in our campus and they believe in um, our kids and, and, and who we are as a part of Austin. So thank you all um, for that work and that time and that money um, to make this space a reality. Um, and thank you all for being here and ending your week with us. Mm -hmm.